So today we're going to talk about Premiere again, and the next map coming up for Premiere is Pearl, so that is the map we are going to talk about. Again, there is a ton of things that I could include that I'm not going to have time to do so, but I'm going to give you and try and give you as much of a basic outline as I possibly can uh, in a short amount of time as I possibly can. So let's dive into it straight away. The first thing, of course, we need to talk about is our team comp. And, uh, well, I am going to suggest to you that you play the loud comp, which is Harbor Viper, uh, a Jet, a Killjoy, and a Sky. And I know what some of you are probably already thinking. None of us have ever played Harbor in our lives. I'm not going to play Harbor. I can't play Harbor. I am telling you now, one of you will be able to play Harbor. It will take you maybe 10 minutes max of going into a custom game to learn basically what you need to for Harbor on this map. I am not going to ask you to do anything that is really that difficult whatsoever. And I tr promise that within 10 minutes of a custom game, you could probably figure out most of the Harbor stuff that we are going to be doing. But if you truly insist on not playing Harbor, then you could potentially replace it for an Astra. You will be playing pretty different if you don't know how to play Astra on this map. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to play Astra because we're going to be focusing on Harbor. You could if you really want to do Viper and Jet. I would say just play them. They're pretty good. Uh, you could play a Cypher for a Killjoy. Uh, yeah, if you prefer Cypher and you you know, know a lot of Cypher setups, that's probably fine. And uh, you could maybe replace Sky with KO. Again, I wouldn't advise it necessarily, but it, it is possible. And again, if you are a massive KO fan, KO nerd or whatever, then sure, go for it. And so we're actually going to start with the attack side uh, this time. Last time we started on the defense, but this time I think it's a bit easier to talk about the attack side first. So we are going to start with that. And we're going to start off with our default. And we are only going to be running really one main default on this map. And this is what it's going to look like. We're going to have Harbor, Jet, and Sky uh, out towards this A site. We're going to have Killjoy here uh, towards mid. And we're going to have Viper over here towards B. And let's start left to right here. So we're going to start with Viper. And uh, what you're going to do is Viper pretty much every single round, I think, on your attack side. Is you're going to come to uh, the left-hand side of the barrier just here. And you're basically going to aim towards the kind of back corner of, uh, of Elbow just there. And what you want to do is make sure that your wall is kind of lining up with this towards the back corner just there. Let it rip. And what that wall is going to uh, look like, if I can end the game phase, is it's going to come across here. And it's going to cut across this box here. It's going to cut across people coming back into the site it's going to you know cut off the site there and come towards the deep elbow you know nice little wall and you'll pretty much be throwing that every single round now for your viper orb once you've then thrown that wall you're then going to come across into b main here and you're just going to aim to get your orb basically anywhere in towards there you don't really need to line up or anything for this you just need to get it you know within the general vicinity so you know just just anything like that and it really just any orb that you know kind of allows you to cross across here you know your viper orb is so big that it's, it's almost kind of hard to miss really so once you've got your orb just in there this is pretty much the viper setup that you're going to start off with in most rounds if not you know every round uh to be honest and uh, once you've done this and you've got your setup off uh in this default setup here what you're then gonna do is essentially just check for aggression so you could be standing behind this pillar right and just you know jiggle peeking like so uh you know just checking if there is aggression if you do see some aggression you can you know put your orb up and potentially escape if you're against a like a, an eco or something and you do feel like they are coming up you could you know even retreat back you know to somewhere like this just to get the better angle against the kind of eco weapons you know longer range fight here with your rifle all of that is absolutely fine but basically that's going to be your main job in this default is just to check are they being aggressive towards b and if you know you haven't heard anything in a little while you know you might start to to creep up eventually and you know see if you can take some space here if you do feel like you know there isn't anyone there for Killjoy here, what we want to be doing is putting an our alarm bot somewhere in here. We don't want to be putting it down there because then they could cross across there. You can see that the alarm bot doesn't quite uh, cover every single part of it. But with this box, it will do. So if you come and just, you know, put it somewhere kind of in here, you know, with this box up here, there's kind of no way uh, that they'll be able to get past it. And then once the barriers drop here, what we will be uh, doing is uh, just coming and putting our turret kind of out here right so this turret as well out here will obviously just watch basically is anyone pushing from mid this is basically what we want to be doing as killjoy and uh, again as the killjoy here we'll be waiting for our other three players to kind of you know take the space that we want we'll just be pretty much chilling here and just kind of you know waiting and if our turret goes off right then we can make that call to our teammates and you know see if mid is clear and if our turret obviously sees absolutely nothing then we'll know that you know mid is probably clear 
But Harbour here, what you want to do is uh, you want to come into the right-hand side of the barrier just here, get a cascade out, and you're going to aim to stop like this that. cascade just at the kind of start of a main just there. So keep an eye on your map, right, as this uh, barrier phase uh, ends just there, as the round starts. You're just going to send out, keep an eye on your map, and you're just going to stop it, you know, something like that. It would be absolutely fine. You know, just cutting off this kind of here, this kind of area, that is absolutely fine. The sky here, again, pretty simple. You're just going to, again, come by the barrier and you're just going to send a flash out right at the start. Send it around this corner. So you get a sky flash out here, right? Just out, you know, somewhere in here just to see, again, is anyone actually creeping up kind of ahead of that harbor wall? Is anyone being up here in a main trying to fight a main? You're just going to send that flash out early on. Obviously, if it does flash someone, uh, then you might want to send in maybe even a second flash or whatnot or be a bit more careful on approach. Uh, if it doesn't flash anyone, then you and Harbour and Jet are basically all just going to run up here. You know, take the space. You might even take the ult orb for Harbour or Sky. Perfectly reasonable as well. And just come and secure this early space towards a main. And so this is pretty much what our early default looks like. Uh, it's very simple, right? It's pretty easy jobs all the way around. And we're just going basically from here, this part towards A, and just taking this early A main control. Now from this default, the first idea that we're going to take a look at here is, uh, well, just a straight up B hit. And uh, this is going to be kind of the main thing I will say for this attack side, is we're going to be doing a lot of B hits and A splits. That's kind of what we're going to be doing. So let's start off with that very infamous B hit. So we could do this out of our default, right? We could start with the default and, and, you know, take this early A main space and then just come back to B main, particularly if our Viper hasn't heard much and if our Killjoy hasn't heard anything either, um, and then just come towards B. And when we're doing this B hit, really, we have a choice of we could do it as a full five stack. That's perfectly fine. We might, if we are planning to do it as a full five stack, have the turret kind of uh, over towards this side of mid instead. And obviously the alarm bot would be coming out of range, so we might come and put it, uh, you know, we might even not use it, to be honest, if we are coming in and doing a full five stack one. Uh, or we could do it as a four stack, uh, you know, with the Killjoy lurk uh, through uh, through kind of mid here, right? Again, if the turret hasn't seen anything here in mid, we might go, okay, it's okay and safe for Killjoy to come down here. Or we might even send the Viper as well and do it for kind of more of a B split kind of look where these three are now going to come towards B and uh, these two are going to lurk towards that. All are perfectly fine options and you might go for different variations in different rounds. Same thing is true in terms of timing as well. As I said, we might start off with the default. We might just start with all five people here just running it down B to start the round. Again, it's a good way of mixing it up and keeping your opponents guessing as to, you know, what exactly it's going to do. But our B hit is probably going to look pretty similar either way. Because what we are going to do, we're going to start off with a harbor wall, okay? And we're just going to send okay. a harbor wall down here. Now, here's the thing. This harbor wall does not need to be perfect. There are some mistakes that we can make, but again... Really, it just doesn't need to be perfect. Don't worry about lining up perfectly and being like, oh, well, I need to get it here and I need to, you know, make sure that it's right on the corner. Of the Don't worry about that, okay? Just send it out. Something like this is perfectly fine and just let it go down there. And then as long as it stops somewhere here, as long as there is no gap here on this side or gap here, like where they can see this way, it's perfectly fine. So I'll show you what those mistakes might look like, right? So if we send a wall like this, this one would be a bit of a mistake, okay? Because what will end up happening with this wall is there's a little gap here, right? So we don't want that gap, that's for sure. And then we don't want a gap where we send it too far either, right? So something like this wall here, as it comes through, we don't want a gap where they can see us through this way. Obviously, this is an exaggeration. But basically, it doesn't matter if it doesn't land perfectly like on this it. corner. As long as it like lands it. anywhere here, is absolutely fine. So again, you're just coming up to this wall. You're just taking a look at your map as the harbor. Okay, that was a bit too far across. This looks absolutely fine. I'm going to send it. And then when it gets to about like there, it. I'm just going to stop it. Okay, so something like that. And again, I didn't hit perfectly on the wall or anything. It doesn't matter. It honestly does not matter because they can't see it. <laughs> Okay, and that's really all that matters. But now let's talk about the second phase here with Harbour. And I'm, this wall you can make mistakes with. So you come and take in the early space with the uh, the cascade just there. But now we're going to do the high tide. And we're going to aim to get it across here. And then across Heaven and across uh, CT as well, right? So we're going to go one, right two, three, something like that. And uh, this wall you can make mistakes. I'll even try and make a mistake here. This one... Might go right, it might go wrong, let's see. But if you do something like this, right, where I have missed it here, obviously what you can end up with is a situation like this, where, you know, it's not smoked off that well, the heaven isn't smoked off, this isn't smoked off. If that happens, if you do mess up, and you will probably know if you've messed up because you can just look at the map, then just, if you have a second cascade, just send it. 
Right, just send a second cascade towards it, and that will at least block off this and some of that. And it will at least do, you know, some of the job of you missing, okay? So if you do really struggle with it, then you can just, you know, send in a cascade as an extra, like, panic button uh, if you really need to. But... I don't think this will take you too long. And again, another I'm going to give you some tips here for if you are struggling. If you are really struggling with it, instead of coming into this corner here, you can come back to here. You can then be seen right from this. There. But if your teammates are holding for you, maybe the cascade is even still up. I think it just makes the angles a bit easier for you, right? This right is there. less of a curve to do. And uh, again, you're just yeah, aiming for something like that. And, you know, you're coming across just there. And you should have a wall that looks... Something like that, right? Where it's covering off both and, you know, that's what you're going for. So if you are struggling with, you know, doing it from this corner because, you know, the curve might be a bit much for you or whatever, then you can come back to uh, this, this area where I do think it is a bit easier on the kind of angles. Another little tip as well, if you are coming into this corner or anywhere in general, is that if you look down, right? So you do the wall past heaven and then you look down. Uh, the idea behind looking down is that hopefully by looking down, the wall will go up and then it will know to come down. It won't carry across heaven, right? So the wall won't carry on this way. When you look down, if you time it right, it will then come across this instead. So that is another thing you can do as well. And that will end up looking hopefully something like this just here. Water rising. So you see how I look down there and, uh, you know, it doesn't carry across heaven. It instead comes down towards this. So if you can time it and look down, you know, at the right point, then hopefully it will come in here and you'll end up with a hard wall that looks something like this, where it looks quite nice and it covers off everything you need to. Now from there, we should have potentially a Viper wall and a hard wall going up. Then we want to plant. Now, where do we want to plant? A lot of you will be like, oh, let's plant here. I actually don't think that this is a great plant spot and you won't see a lot of pros planting there either. Instead, pros will often tend to right plant there. kind of in this middle area here. The reason being is that if I know that you're planting here right by there. this box, even if I'm harbor wall and viper walled off and there's a cove there, I'm still right well within range back here in a very safe spot to still spam you. And the same is going to be true from back here, right? It's right easy there. to guess where you are. I know I just have to do that. And I can still spam you, right? So instead, we're going to come in towards the middle. Where maybe the plant spot is just ever so slightly different. So we're just going to, again, throw down our cove. Plant, you know, somewhere around here. Kind of in towards the middle. Plant it down just there. And then we are absolutely chilling. And the thing is, when we plant there, right? This guy has to be all the way out here to spam. Which is not uh, that safe of an angle, right? You could be exposed if you are out here. Uh, and the same thing is true for people back here. Where... You know, it's a bit more of a guess, right? You can't quite maybe tell exactly where it is. You don't have something that's very easy to just spam into. Okay, next for this B hit, we've got Sky. And the first thing we want to do basically is just send a flash yeah. kind of in towards this area here. This is going with the cascade. So as the cascade, that first cascade yeah. is coming up towards like, you know, this kind of area by the wall. We're just going to send out this flash like so. And it's just going to land in yeah. here. Okay, so I'll just show you where it kind of is landing. Just somewhere like that. Right, and uh, the idea behind this flash is that, you know, let's say we've got like a jet up up here. This flash, you know, should hopefully catch them. If there's, you know, anyone in this pocket just here or playing behind this, that flash is going to catch them, right? So if that flash does go off, we might need to be a bit wary of like, oh, is there actually, you know, someone in this? Is there someone, you know, down here? Is, is there someone on top of that box? All of that kind of stuff. Obviously, if that flash catches no one, we probably know that, yeah, we're pretty good to go. And, uh, you know, we're just focusing on what's going in on site from there you're going to want to send the dog in now the dog you can go a couple different ways from again you're probably just going to stand like by your harbor pretty much you know just kind of in this pocket and uh, you can come this way if you want kind of clearing out this kind of side first and then jumping around the corner something like that you could come uh, this way here uh, you know and kind of clear out the close box and then come back towards elbow this way and clear out something like that like all is fine, all is well, you know, either way is kind of fine. It kind of depends on exactly what you want to do, where your jet wants to go perhaps as well. And then potentially if your jet, you know, does want to come towards elbow and you have another flash, obviously just sending in another flash, you know, around the elbow just there will be, you know, doing fine as well. Just a little flash around here, your jet swings with it, you know, very normal stuff. Or again, if you want to like attack more towards the site, then obviously you will have your Viper wall up, just a flash, you know, obviously past the Viper wall. And again, you'll be fine. Now for Jet on this take, really, again, we aren't we aren't really doing that much, to be honest. You know, we're just kind of coming in here, we're focusing on our aim, we're looking to kill anyone if they are up close, uh, obviously, and kind of take those jewels with anyone there. 
Um, and then really we can just Here. dash across. I mean, some teams like to Here. go for kind of a, an updraft onto the screen. I'm not a massive fan of that, to be honest. So I would just say, you know, get your dash active, you know, just send in a flash. In you go. Right, and then maybe you sky flashes through you back here, and, and again, you're just chilling, you're going in, you're finding those kills. Okay, now let's talk about Viper on this B here, and for Viper, you've got obviously your default setup. As we start, we're putting up our Viper up here, the Cascade is coming out and stuff like that, and as we're starting to scale down on site, you can actually come and pick up your Viper up just there. Now, obviously, once we start Toxins the actual hit itself onto the site, our Toxic Screen is going up uh, just there as well, and I have an additional extra for you if you want as well here. To, this is completely optional, you don't have to do this, uh, but if you come and kind of line yourself up with just kind of the eye of the fish there, Toxins and if you put your down. fuel bar, so left hand side of your fuel bar is just you see where these ridges are here you're just going to put it in between the second and the third ridge so the left hand side of the fuel bar just kind of there as uh, on the two kind of drops and just uh, send a snake bite across there as well uh, if you so choose and that snake bite is just going to come down here and kind of land in this area and obviously just make it difficult for anyone if they are kind of you know in here towards elbow it's just going to make it you know pretty difficult with the snake bite there if you are really planning to you know like attack the site so that's just a little additional extra for you and then with the viper all picked up right when you're actually getting the spike down you can just go and throw your viper orb actually on the spike which obviously just means that you know anyone trying to defuse the spike will take more damage as you're spamming into them now in terms of post plan lineups for viper here what you can do is actually if you are all the way back towards this screen what you can do is put yourself up against this back wall here crouch so that no one can see you and essentially then you can just aim at kind of the line going across this and you know if someone is pinging the spike in particular so let's say i yeah. planted the spike there right so i'm just going to obviously line up but this uh, kind of edge of this roof is normally going to be a good barometer as well and just send a snake bite out that snake bite is going to land pretty much in the middle of of this right so i said yeah. plant kind of here in the middle right if you do exactly what i just said so that is coming to the back wall you're crouching don't forget to crouch otherwise this will miss uh, you're kind of just in the middle of this back wall, in line uh, with that wall on the middle of that line there, sending that snake bite out, and you will have post plant snake bites right there. And uh, obviously, you can adjust it slightly if you have planted in a slightly different position. Okay, and for Killjoy here, if we are just going for the full five B stack, we can come and just put a turret like this. Eventually, even if it doesn't see people come in here, eventually. They are going to have to run and come and destroy this. Or uh, we could just obviously put an alarm bot down at any point as well. Anything like this is going to be fine. Uh, but as you're coming in to the site as the Killjoy here, what you're going to be doing is obviously as the Cascade goes up and you're kind of entering this first kind of part of the site just here, uh, you might get a little moment to chill there as you then start to you know wait for kind of the main exec to come in. You're going to come and stand here. So this is behind the pillar, not the first tile, but the second tile just there. And uh, for the lineup, what you're going to do is you're going to put your log down basically at the top of the archway now you know something like that right it doesn't even have to be fully perfect uh because this nano doesn't need to be absolutely perfect but just a left click throw uh from something like that will uh, land your nano swarm just in here and uh, this nano swarm here obviously is going to stop anyone from entering back in onto the site or rotating in from here so they're just going to be delayed from actually coming and helping their teammates out or it might just damage someone who has to retreat and you know maybe it's flashed and whatever trying to retreat that way and for the Killjoy Nano Swarms, it's actually kind of similar to the Viper Mollies here as well. That if you are back here and you have a Nano Swarm available, and again, the spike is planted, you know, something like across here, kind of in the middle. Again, you can do the same thing where you just come up against this back wall here, crouch. Uh, again, just aim towards this line, kind of line up uh, with the end of that roof just there, just on this line here. Uh, so you're aiming at this just here. And uh, then what you're going to do is, obviously for the Viper Molly, it was just click. But for the Killdren, I know it's a jump Placing click. And grenade. you just hope that they're not good enough uh, to kill you there. And again, that will land kind of in the middle just there. So you do have to jump uh, and expose yourself uh, ever so slightly. But you should be good. Again, don't forget to crouch. And so this is overall what it's going to look like. We're going to start off with the Viper Orb up. We're going to send the Cascade. And we're going to send a Flash just in here as well. We're then going to get to the main part of the exit where we're putting up uh, this high tide here. We're sending in the nano swarm. Maybe we've done this snake bite. Uh, the viper wall is going to be up. The dog is going to be sending in and our jet is going to be following it. And then finally, we're going to end up in this spot where our jet has kind of dashed up here, following the dog towards elbow. Maybe if we do see someone, but we don't quite stun them or whatever, we might want to send a flash in here as well for our jet. Our harbor is going to cove up onto the site. We're going to pick up our viper orb and put that on the spike as well. And then we're going to enjoy the good old spam fest coming back here towards P-Long and just win the round.
Okay, now let's move on to our second idea, though, which is going to be an A split. So again, we got the same default idea. We're going to come and take uh, this A main space just there. Again, we got the same Killjoy and Viper setups just there. But for this A split, what we're going to do is we're actually going to basically swap positions, essentially. Our Viper and our Killjoy are going to end up coming back towards A, and our Sky, uh, Jet, and Harbor are going to come back towards mid. So we're going to end up with something uh, that looks a bit like this, right, where we've actually swapped positions. Now, don't worry too much. Obviously, this utility would have faded by now because our turret will still be checking mid. So as long as this turret doesn't see anything, right, as long as that turret doesn't get destroyed, then we'll know that this is a safe space. If this turret does get destroyed, obviously, we might want to be a bit more extra careful. We might not want to go for this idea in this particular round. But let's start off with Harbor, and uh, we're going to start off with a wall that is completely optional. Okay, you're going to end up tucking yourself into this corner here and you're going to try and get a wall right that there. goes like right so, there. like across those four pings just there. And uh, it's going to end up looking something like this. Okay, so something like that. It's going to block off line of sight back there and in there and then uh, towards this as well and across here. Okay, so this wall is just good for potentially threatening to take different areas of the map, right? So we might start off with this wall by coming in here and kind of, you know, spamming a bit and like making some noise. But then our goal is to ultimately come back towards A and do an A split. So, you know, with the wall coming across here like it was, we can just, you know, start to maybe come up here and slowly clear this out with our jet and sky and whatnot but again that wall is completely optional and if you are new to harbor or whatnot you don't need to do it because the actual wall that then we will be waiting for to actually take the site can just be something as simple as this okay you're just going to aim to hit right this there. and that okay very very simple just like that right how simple is that right just cover off that and then you're just covering off that Right, absolutely simple, bare bones, simple, very simple wall. And uh, we can just do this and come down in towards art here. And then we're going to send in a cascade down right towards uh, down towards secret just there. So this cascade, again, you're just going to send it. Uh, again, you will need to keep an eye on sort of when you are, you know, uh, ending this one. I think it's actually slightly better to put kind of the left hand edge towards, uh, right towards this here. Uh, if you can, I think that that just makes it a bit easier in general. It makes the wall a bit better. Uh, so again, just sending it in. And this is what you're going to scale up with. And you're going to end up stopping the wall, something like that. And then this is absolutely fine. No one back here can see. Again, it doesn't need right to be there. perfectly sat sat there or whatever. Where I stopped it is actually probably better, to be honest, so that there isn't a gap in it. Uh, so yeah, you're just sending it in like so. You're keeping an eye on it. Your jet and sky should be, uh, you know, kind of coming in with it just there. And you're just stopping it here. And uh, with the wall right that there. you have over there, the high tide, you know, this should be all covered. Right that there. will be covered. Uh, flowers right will be covered. And this right will be there. covered as well. And then as you're scaling it into sight, you just want to put a cove down, right? And again, hop in plant the spike jobs are good okay for sky here again if we are wanting to like fake a bit of presence like oh we could be coming b guys oh yeah you know we might send a flash down there or whatever we might send a flash through that door with that better harbor wall but if not again it doesn't really matter it kind of depends on how the round's going but we can just come and do a dog down in towards that this is going to be very very common right just coming and checking all of this and just basically, you know, checking this area and your jet and maybe harbor will be scaling up with this as well. And just coming and taking the silly space. There might be someone there. There might not be someone there. You might need to flash again. Depends. Depends on what's going to happen. You, I, I can't really predict for you. But that's going to be a dog that you're very commonly going to use. Then as you're actually coming in towards the site, you're basically just going to send a flash around that corner just there. Uh, be careful of people around here, right? There could be uh, there could be people uh, in towards this. That is a possibility, so be careful of that. But yeah, just a flash towards the back site is perfectly fine. Okay, and for Viper here, you're going to be in a main. You're going to line yourself up with uh, this Kingdom Industry sign just here. You should be pretty safe as you should have already taken uh, this A main control for this. Uh, and what you're going to do, I'm going to give you two different ways of lining up. So uh, you're either going to line up with this little bit here of construction and the back part of kind of the pearl construction, this part here, or you're going to use uh, this kind of wobbling brick but the thing is that brick obviously moves so it's a bit hard to use a lineup but essentially if we use the first part you're going to line up the left hand ui next to the snake bite you're going to come and put where the line curves the upper curve of the line uh essentially where that flattens out you're going to put that uh just on towards that and then just bring it down so that the line the straight line kind of neatly forms onto the construction part of uh, of the pearl the kind of dome construction and send it or as i said you can kind of line this up with sort of the edge of this brick come about you know 
45, 50% across to like this part here and uh, somewhere in there, send it in. And uh, what you will get is you will get hopefully a snake bite that lands uh, back towards the back of the site just here that comes in and uh, essentially, you know, will hit anyone back here. And what you're going to do for Killjoy here is you're going to come and land yourself uh, up with this. And uh, see this light here, this thing, uh, it, the, what this is sitting on here, this little platform, it's a little bit of construction. What you're going to do is uh, you're going to put the kind of uh, right hand bit of the UI again, where it just curves down the curvy bit on the kind of uh, left hand edge of that just there. And then you're going to just up it just ever so slightly and uh, just left click throw. And uh, then this Narasorm will come and it will go and land uh, just in there for you. And uh, I have invulnerability on, but you can see you come back here and you're still getting hit. And this will be a nice little lineup for you. And so overall, this is probably something what it's going to look like. You're going to start off obviously in your default here with Sky coming and dogging towards Art. Next phase, obviously, is your Jet and Harbor will be scaling up. Your Viper and Killjoy will be getting in positions for the lineups. And then as we uh, start to come forward, you get the Harbor uh, High Tide coming in uh, over towards A. Uh, the dog will probably uh, be gone by this point. Your Killjoy and uh, Viper lineups have probably started to be thrown. They're starting to come up in towards A main as well. And then you're going to get into this position where your uh, Cascade is obviously coming out. These two are starting to come onto the site. The Mollies have now landed. You're going to send a Flash in towards the back site just here. Your Jet is going to follow up with it. Maybe, uh, maybe dashing onto the site, but honestly, you might not even need to use uh, the dash as you are, you know, all scaling in on towards the site at this point. Okay, and our final idea here coming from our default is going to be an A art pinch. So what we're going to do here is these three are going to stay in A main. Uh, these two are going to come uh, back towards A here, and you're actually going to try and pinch in on this position just here and kill anyone in that space. So what we're going to do for this one in terms of harbor is we're going to obviously we've taken this a main space early and uh, we're just going to come and stand back here and basically just put a wall kind of across the site like so. So just across the middle of the site there, you're just going to put a wall and it's just going to go something like that is perfectly fine. And this is the wall you're going to use. Now that again, this part is optional, but you might want to add it is to actually if you have a second cascade here just to come and, you know, stand here and basically send the cascade across this that's just going to land in there for your teammates as well, you know, so something across here so that again as your teammates uh, come and pinch on this area you know no one can be in there but sky here your job is going to be pretty simple you're just going to come and dog and basically send the dog after the harbor wall comes up in towards this area and just you know clear all of this out and try and stun anyone if anyone is there another thing you can do as well if there is kind of a big hold up here for your viper and killjoy is you can send a flash in through this window as well so let's say your uh viper and killjoy you know got to this spot and they had a fight and, and they know that some Someone's like in here, you could just send a flash through that window for them to then swing. So you're aiming through this window here uh, just to help them swing. That again is a complete optional extra. There might be no one there. And so that flash might be a waste of time. But Jet here, obviously your job will be to kind of follow the dog and uh, come and pinch on these people in this area. So you want to be timing this so that your Viper and Killjoy are kind of swinging from this way. You're swinging from this way and you're just absolutely destroying your opponents as the dog is coming up as well. And so overall, this is what it's going to look like. Obviously, again, we're going to start off with our default and take that space. And then we're going to end up with this, right? So we've got the dog coming across again. Don't forget to check this kind of close right with the dog just there because your Jet could just get a kill there uh, if possible. And your Jet is going to to come dashing in come around here these guys are going to come this way and hopefully the idea is to get a stun off and just pinch on the people there and then obviously once we're at this point and you know we've kind of pinched that space uh, then obviously we can just harbor in cove get the spike down and then we have a pretty nice post plant with some pretty good post plant positions and so those are our ideas coming out of this. And as I said, our main ideas here are going to be B hits and A splits. And you can do them at different times. You might go for a fast B hit. You might go for a fast race, but you might play it very, very slowly. You know, that's how we're going to kind of confuse our opponents here by changing the timings. And I would say don't completely ignore this area, right? I did give you that harbor wall to potentially create some pressure in there. Uh, but, you know, maybe send a sky flash every so often, right? A harbor cascade potentially as well. If you feel like you don't need a, a second one, uh, you know, send those kind of things in uh, just to create maybe some illusion that you are going to do this. But ultimately, it's going to be a lot of B hits and a lot of A splits. Okay, let's just quickly touch on post plants as well. And of course, as I kind of said in the Ascent video, post plants come in so many different shapes and sizes and forms that I can't really, you know, go into a lot of ton of depth because we'd be here all day talking about all the different possibilities. On B, as I'm sure many of you know, a very effective post plant strategy is just to come back here, 
and spam the spike. And it really does work quite often. You do have to be aware potentially of any flanks coming in. But honestly, there isn't much more to say about it. This, if you get the spike down somewhere like here, you might want to keep someone in elbow, by the way. Some of the times, obviously, particularly on saves, maybe pistol round as well, if you do end up on B. Uh, you know, you do want to keep someone here some of the time because you don't want your opponents just like knowing that, oh yeah, we can just take this first part for free. You know, no one's ever going to be on site. Like, you know, you will want some situations where you do have people on site so that they have to take the time and utility, you know, to actually clear these areas. That is something you will want to do. Um, but a lot of the time also, you will just want to be playing back here and basically just saying, yep, we're just going to spam you and we're going to take our chances because chances are you will win, especially if you have those lineups, as I was saying, with the Killjoy and Viper and the Orbits on the spike. Like, good luck to them, to be honest, uh, because, yeah, this will be a, a winning strategy a lot of the time. For these A post plants here, uh, your harbor often will probably be maybe somewhat stranded on site as they are getting the spike down, depending on how much of the site you've actually taken um, and whatnot. But, you know, that might be a common possibility. So your harbor might just have to try their best, essentially. Uh, but obviously, A main is going to be a common position you're going to just come and play with because the spam works pretty well here as well, just from A main. If we have taken uh, towards mid as well, areas like this, this little corner here, and back towards this box, particularly if you have like a Killjoy alarm bot or something there, right? It's quite useful because then this Killjoy can just look this way. This Viper can just look this way and then if this alarm bot does go off you know then you can kind of both turn and create this crossfire if needed right stuff like that can be quite useful as well but again these a post plants are going to come in a, a ton of different shapes and sizes if you are going to push ct let's say you've heard some uh, you know pushing out on b uh, and you want to take deep a control i would suggest coming out this way this is quite common uh to try and like hold like this area here so you're trying to stop them coming in this way uh and uh, you know you can create some nice little post plants by taking this space as well in terms of alt usage obviously jet knives are jet knives seekers are kind of just seekers like you know use them when you feel like you need to use them uh there really isn't much else to say for the harbor alt essentially whether it be in a post plant or taking the site as well uh yeah just using a harbor alt on the b site something like this very good alt right and the same is true for a as well whether you know on either side of, of kind of doing an a split uh, you know, doing a harbor ult is just going to be good, right? Just a harbor ult in onto the site. Very, very useful, to be honest. You know, be it from either of these areas. Yeah, harbor ult is going to be uh, a pretty good ult. Uh, so whether it's in a post plant, you know, just send it in towards the site as you're doing a site exec or in a post plant and you'll probably be fine. For Killjoy Lockdowns, coming and putting a Killjoy Lockdown in uh, this corner here is going to be very common uh, for these B hits. And uh, you might want to learn uh, either a lineup or you can just kind of eyeball it as well. Just sending in a Nano Swarm just like that uh, into the back corner there so that no one can uh, be in that back corner. That's going to be quite effective for you. But yeah, that's a pretty good uh, Killjoy Lockdown. And then essentially this kind of two on A that I would suggest using. This one can be a bit risky, but if it is like a, you know, a situation where you feel like this is pretty clear, you know whether you've been there yourself or, or whatever right it's a bit hard to defend this one if there are defenders coming from this way but it's a good lockdown if there isn't you know it covers a lot of ground if it isn't and really pushes them back so if you feel like you can defend that that's pretty good but a more standard one is probably just going to be coming and putting in here you can just do a full 5a hit off this kill drill if you want again just mixing it up a bit uh, with where you're just going to do a full A hit. It might look like the default at a bit of a start, but then you're just going to come and put a kill drill down in and take the A site and uh, win the round. In terms of Viper's Pits, the ones on B, I mean, probably are going to be a bit messy because, you know, wherever you put this pit, you know, there's going to be multiple entrance points. Even if you put one towards elbow, you know, there's still two ways in. Like, you know, there isn't going to be a ton of great places. You can still do it, right? And it's going to make it obviously harder in the post plant for your opponents there. But I would say for most Viper's Pits, you should be aiming to use them on A because there's uh, some really good ones on A that you can use, uh, you know, be it kind of uh, something like this where you just like touch onto the site and, uh, and send in a pit like that. It gives you this little pocket in here to just play in and uh, it's going to cover a lot of the site particularly if the spike is kind of just planted uh, here you know you can then just you know they have to diffuse inside the kind of pit and you can just you know throw snake bites on it this one's going to be pretty good because again you do have this little pocket to play from uh, that's nice and safe so something like that or if you want to you know get a bit more aggressive with it you know a viper's pit kind of uh, in towards this as well could absolutely be fine anywhere in here really you know it is going to be good so i would suggest using your viper's pit towards a more so than b uh, but you can still use it towards b and it'll still be pretty decent okay and now let's move on to the defensive side 
And so let's talk about some defensive setups and we'll start off with what I will call defensive setup number one for you here. And we'll start off talking about what our Viper is doing. And so let's start off by talking about Viper in this one. What you're going to do, and this is going to be a common Viper screen you're going to use pretty much throughout your defensive side, is you're going to come into this corner in B-Link just here, and uh, you're going to throw your Viper wall so that the screen kind of hits the bottom corner of uh, of the screen just there. So you want to be aiming up with kind of the bottom corner of that screen, uh, and then uh, just letting it send it. And uh, obviously this Viper wall here will cut across this, but also it will give you a corner to play from as well that you might want to use where you're just... Just tucked in behind the viper screen just there but i also want to show you uh, the one way orb here so you're just going to come up to the barrier here and uh, as i drop the barrier here you will see that there's just kind of a basically a, a, an edge a, a rim of sorts uh just here and you're just going to aim towards that essentially and uh if you get because sometimes it will tell you like on a custom game here with cheats on that this will be a one way no matter what yeah, that actually isn't true but if you just come i kind of line it up you know somewhere like here and if you just look for this kind of brick here on the bottom left ui where your kind of health bar is and whatnot uh just with the gap in the cement if you just put like kind of this bigger gap here uh put your line in there then it, it will guarantee be a one way and there you go you've got your one way and uh just to show you what that looks like for the opponents if they were to walk through it yeah not ideal you'll probably have a bit of a favorable fight just there and i will just quickly show you as well the little gap in uh, the viper screen just here as well uh so that you could come and potentially play from in here as well now your Killjoy setup for this one, you can come and just put a turret on top of the little bridge here uh, towards B main. And then put your alarm bot. I mean, this is basically up to you. You might try very slight different variations. You could come and put it in the middle. You could put it, come and put it there. You could come and wait until put it there. Uh, you know, really it's up to you. And it's the same thing with these nano storms where you could place them there. You could place one in here. It kind of depends on what you've seen your opponent doing, right? But, you know, something like this, if it, when the alarm bot goes off, you know, potentially can stop you with the turret going off as well. Something like this could be pretty decent. Now, as harbor for this setup, very simple. You're just going to come to the right-hand side of the barrier and send a wall. Remember, if you do curve it, you can just stop it straight away rather than letting it go on for ages. But, you know, very, very simple stuff. Just come in and put a wall there. And you're going to scale up with the sky and the jet and, uh, you know, just come and take this space. Now, if you want to as well as Sky, you can send a flash either through the wall or up or over and above and then down towards a main if you want to get that information. Uh, for instance, if this flash then, you know, sees absolutely no one, you might leave someone here, but then uh, you two might start to come back. You could then even send a, a second flash or even the dog out here towards Art to make sure that, you know, they haven't come here quickly because obviously your Killjoy and Viper are still in position to defend uh, kind of, you know, this B side of the, of the map, uh, but you won't have early info towards Art. But it's kind of rare for people to come sprinting down here, to be honest. Uh, so I don't expect that they will for you either. So you can just quickly send that in. And obviously, again, if your Killjoy starts hearing that they're stomping down there, you know, then you're going to get uh, options as these guys up here. You could go on a flank. You could come back. It kind of depends on what you want to do. Okay, defensive setup number two is going to actually be a B strong side setup instead. So we this time we've got the harbor, sky, and the jet over towards B. We got a Killjoy setup in towards mid, and we got our Viper here over towards A. Now, the first thing here is Viper, if you are going to do the setup, is you do need to be pretty quick. If I turn the match uh, timer off, you can just about make this, but you, you know, don't have time to be dilly-dallying and stuff like that, right? So the call needs to come in early that this is what you want to do, uh, and then you need to, you know, very quickly send in this Viper wall down here, and then you need to be on your bike, uh, because, you know, if you're not, you will not make it to A in time. And if you do not, then, you know, maybe a fast A hit, you will get caught off guard. But you can see that I am going to make this right. And by the time that the barriers actually go down, I've got my orb in hand and I'm ready to just, you know, put this on the stairs just there. And now I'm ready to play on this A site. For Killjoy, your job is pretty simple, right? You've got your turret here just uh, towards uh, one side of mid and then your alarm button, nano swarms, or maybe just one nano swarm. You might even put a nano swarm here as well uh, to start off with, kind of up to you and, and what you think is going on really and what might be best. Either of those is perfectly fine, right? And and your job is just to kind of hold down mid. Obviously, if your Killjoy does get a bit lost here as Viper, uh, you might need to come and obviously retreat somewhere back here. Uh, make sure that you're not getting pinched in on. Uh, so keep that in mind. And then for these three, this is where we're going to get a bit aggressive. So for the harbor, Sky and the Jet, again, for the harbor, very, very simple. You're just going to send a wall up there. Okay, you're just going to send a wall up there and you're going to send it, right? And you're just going to try and keep them back there. If you're sick of all these B hits like me, then don't be afraid to fight this out as a three and just go for it, right? And again, as the sky, you might send in a flashback there. 
right uh, behind this wall or whatnot. And then you kind of have options as to what exactly you want to do. Because what you could do, and I should have mentioned this for A as well, really, is you could just send in the hub wall and a flash and just, you know, not even be aggressive, right? Like actually just come and uh, reposition and just kind of leave someone back here, just kind of jump peeking on B and whatnot and uh, kind of feign the aggression. You could have done that for A as well, by the way. You can send up the wall, send out a flash, and just send no one there, and just kind of feign that aggression early on. Um, and you could do that for B, or you could just come and fight this, right? You could just fight this as a three, maybe get behind this box here, one of you, you know, be, be kind of ready to fight in these different angles. If you can get something like this going, this would be quite nice, right? So a, a flash is gonna come out, right? And then we're gonna swing, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff, that, that would be quite nice. You could, even if you wanted to, maybe you didn't see, maybe this first flash, that you sent through this wall didn't catch anyone um you know you you send it up here and, and it doesn't really catch anyone so maybe you actually dog through and actually you know take take this space even right and then you just like you know could even leave potentially like a jet up in a really good spot like this and then you two just come back down here and you know come and help out elsewhere on the map Okay, defensive setup number three is going to be a bit of a variation on two. Basically, uh, these guys are going to do the exact same thing. They're going to be running up here, but this time we've got the Viper in mid towards uh, this orb. So this is like a really heavy B setup, right? We've got three players here, and we got the Viper here as well to, you know, kind of fast rotate if needed. You know, we've essentially got four people on this side of the map. So this is kind of, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy towards B. The Viper's job is just trying to guard that. And for Killjoy, we have uh, this turret set up here towards A uh, that's going to, you know, kind of watch both sides of A. We could put nano swarms like this. We could go for kind of a kill setup for the actual plant itself, right? So we put an alarm bot kind of on the default plant spot with two nanos in like that if we wanted to. That's perfectly fine as well. You know, and we're just playing very, very passive here as the kill drain. Maybe we're doing this with certain ults as well uh, that we might want to use. But again, kind of a, a bit of a variation setup this time, which is kind of even more heavily leaned towards B. And setup number four here is going to look something like this. Now, this Viper Orb might be a bit optional in this one. You might even want to come and put it uh, just here instead. Uh, it kind of depends. You might swap the Viper in the Harbor after doing the one way. Uh, all can kind of depend. we got the Kildra set up here. These two are probably just going to look for information, maybe with the Sky Flash out here early. This is probably a setup you want to do maybe with a Jet Op down here towards B. Uh, you know, then the Sky and the Harbor can maybe come and play together in this kind of space. But if you do hear any pressure kind of in towards this A site or anything like that, what you can do as harbor is essentially wall off all three of these different areas. So what that's going to look like here for the harbor is you're going to come close uh, up to the door here and you're just going to try and hit this, this and this essentially. It's not the most difficult wall in the world to do, just something like that. Uh, will do absolutely fine and you can see we cut off this uh, we make it even difficult to get through here and uh, we also cover off a main as well so something like that will be a perfectly nice little wall for you and make it really difficult for your opponents to get in. And then setup number five is going to be a mid push. So we've still got the same Viper wall here. We've uh, run the Viper across. You've done your little sprint there and got uh, the Viper all across here. We've got the Kildra set up over towards B. But what we're going to do is we're going to harbor wall off mid, right? So off both sides of mid, we're going to harbor wall this. And uh, both the Jet in the Sky and the Harbor are going to come walking out here. And we're going to try and control this space. Now this flash here from the sky might be a bit optional if you feel like you've heard people running through it or they've sent utility towards it. You could either back out, you could try and fight with a flash of your own. Kind of up to you and how the game is going and what you think is the best option. But to show you that harbor wall, basically you're just going to come, uh, you know, here in mid, kind of towards where the barrier starts. And again, you're just going to line yourself up with that. Uh, again, if you need to make it easier for yourself, you know, you can come into kind of this corner where the where it's going to be less extreme and you can very easily, you know, do a wall like that. But if you are, you know, a bit more proficient with harbor, then, you know, you can come and just line yourself up here. And again, get the same effect essentially on these walls. And you're just going to wall off mid like so. And then out you come with the sky and the jet. And you're just going to try and, you know, create a bit of pressure here in mid. And again, this could be fake pressure. You could just do this wall with absolutely nothing behind it, right? You could do this wall with the idea of, you know, fast flanking either towards A or B, right? Maybe you're playing against a no sentinel comp. And this is going to be a really good idea because they're not going to know that you're here and you're realizing that they're just sending it down B very fast every round. This could be a great way of, you know, trying to punish that because you've got the Kildra set up here on B and you're going to be fast flanking them. So again, kind of depends exactly on where the game's going. I wouldn't suggest doing this at the very start of uh, your defensive half. Maybe once you've kind of realized something that, you know, you can take advantage of or exploit, you could go for something like this. A quick note on rotations as well. Uh, the safe rotation, of course, right is there. just to go through spawn. And uh, even rotating 
you know, let's say I was towards B link and I'm coming towards A over here, you know, even a rotate like this can have some risk to it, right? It could, if, you know, your teammates have lost this space, there could easily be someone, you know, sitting in this kind of area up here, you know, so basically on this map, if you have lost a bit of mid, you know, essentially all rotations of bar spawn and even spawn, if you lose mid, can have some danger, of course, with when uh, people are coming through here. So anytime you're rotating on this map, just be aware of what's going on, right? Like where your teammates are, what's kind of happened in the round, right? And and where a safe rotation is. Um, and in terms of obviously getting aggressive with a rotate with, you know, something like out here, of course, this can pay massive dividends if, you know, they are okay. going for an A split and, you know, you they aren't cautious of you walking up behind them. Yeah, that can be a great play. But again, against a good team, you know, okay. once you've done that once, they will probably start to punish you for it if they know what they're doing uh, because, you know, they'll just leave someone there and then, you know you'll come running this way and then someone will pick you from behind and you'll be a free kill okay now let's come to retakes let's start off with the elephant in the room which is the b site retaking this b site can be simply hell it can be absolute nightmarish hell um we've got a comp that can maybe do it sometimes you know we're gonna have the vipe wall we're gonna be sending harbor walls in here as well right let's say they've just full five stacked it down b which is gonna be pretty common you can obviously just go for a wall you know something across like that if you want to but you can start sending in deeper walls as well right to section off some of these places so you can go for what i'll call like a middle kind of wall you know kind of in there kind of uh kind of midway up or if they're playing like really really far off all the way at the top you could even you know try and section of those players off right at the very top you know with a wall like this now this probably is a is a bit out of range uh so much so i would stick right to kind of this mid wall or just the normal one there obviously we've got the cove which is going to be our main diffusing tool as well we've got a ton of smoke in this comp as well we've got sky flashes right down here but even so retaking this b site I don't think anyone has truly mastered it yet, so I'm not here to give you all of the answers because it is going to be pretty hard. One thing that I will say is if you are playing jet, let's say you've got a jet up for this B retake, Coming on top of this box, you can actually get above a lot of the walls, right? So you will actually be able to still see people uh, back there, you know, with the Viper wall going up a harbor wall, whatnot. You will still be able to see from up on this box. So this can be a nice little angle to use for these B retakes in general is to come on top of this box as a jet and try that. When we're talking about these A retakes, of course, these can get very, very tricky, particularly in towards art, because you can have situations where, you know, there's an attacker okay. standing here and, and I'm coming on the flank and I've got a free kill on this attack. Attacker, but then another attacker has a free kill on me as I'm looking this way But then my teammate has actually come out through mid and they've got a free kill on this guy And it just depends on who sees who first right like that is gonna be you know Somewhat fairly common actually in uh, in these a retakes It can get very messy in here towards R, and there really isn't you know too much to say without knowing the specifics of the situation so just be aware of that essentially that you know as soon as you basically drop down from here you know, chaos, chaos reigns, essentially, because there's a lot to check. Um, and there's a lot of people that could be in a lot of areas. Uh, another thing that I will mention, though, is Leviathan, perhaps the best uh, retake team on this map, do like to do these retakes with all five people coming from CT, right? So they like to right flood there. in with a couple right players there. from there, maybe three players coming this way, and just kind of slowly work up the site, maybe to avoid, you know, that kind of complication. So we might start off with a harbor wall, something like this, right? And then we're coming in, you know, we're all clearing the site. Okay, we've cleared the site and, you know, now we're going to either attack towards R or we're going to attack towards A main. So we might flash through this, right? And come and attack this as kind of a team, that kind of thing. And that could be one way that you approach this A site on these retakes. But even then, you do have to be a bit right wary there. of even this flank as well. So if your killjoy was starting off towards B, but you know it's everyone's over towards A, make sure that as the killjoy, you are recalling your abilities so that you can come and place right them there. in positions like this. Or if you do come towards art, that you can, you know, go and uh, make sure that no one is coming on a flank right like there. this way, right? Like... That's going to be pretty important for the killjoy to do on this map because there is a lot of potential for reflex for the attackers. Okay, and lastly, in terms of alt usage here, again, the jet knives are jet knives, the seekers are seekers, use them when you feel free. Uh, the harbor ult, again, just for retakes, is going to be pretty good. It can also be used for stopping people getting into the site, um, but considering that the sites can be a bit difficult to hold, obviously, notably this B site, uh, it can be a very good ult for retakes, particularly if, you know, you are sending it in here and, uh, you know, nothing is going off. You no then know that, yes, we can just charge, you know, that way, right? If we know that no one's in there, that's going to be a nice bit of information. We can just, you know, focus this fight down there and just try and fight it out with our opponents.
For Killjoy, I would say you're mainly going to be using your ult towards the B site, but, you know, there are some decent positions for this A site as well, you know, be it something like in here. Uh, if you feel like you can defend that, that's a, you know, this is a pretty good ult that's going to cover pretty much all of the site. The same one actually is true here in Arth, right? If they've just gone for a full A push this way and you feel like you can defend this, right? If you feel like this is actually something you can defend, you know, by maybe just putting nano swarms down by you or whatnot. Like, again, this is going to be a pretty good ult for both sides. Towards this B site, when you have the Killjoy ult, you might just go for a full kind of retake setup, right? You might just come and put your turret there, you know, with the nanos down here like we showed before. Uh, but you're actually just playing in here, right? You're actually just playing away from it so that you can go and put uh, a Killjoy lockdown in, you know, something like this. And you're just going to heavily defend that and make sure no one's coming that way. And you're going to heavily defend this Killjoy lockdown here. It's going to mean that no one is kind of on the site. They get pushed back really really far this is kind of a must to be honest on this b site when you have killjoy ult because this site is so hard to defend using an ult here like that i mean look at how good that ult is and it's gonna potentially win you rounds on this b site that otherwise might be very difficult to get and then finally for a viper's pit you know i used to say never put a viper's pit here on b because it's gonna be hard to defend and whatnot i've changed my mind Put the Viper's Pit on B, because even if it's just a slight deterrent of stopping people coming towards this site, right? Even if it's just something like this and you have this little wall to hide behind here, and even if it's going to be hard to stop people, probably in most games this will be enough to deter people, right? And you might want a second person in here with you, at least to start, uh, most certainly, uh, you know, just to kind of get it settled and whatnot. And yeah, this isn't going to be super easy to hold down as a Viper, because it is a kind of big space to still defend. But if it stops them coming B, then that's great. And so you probably should try this just to see if it stops people from coming towards this B site. And so that is my guide for Pearl. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, uh, you know, I'm trying to fit as much as I can in here in as little time as possible. Uh, I know that some of you will not enjoy using Harbor, but trust me, he's really good on this map. And if you just can go into a custom game and learn kind of the basics you know, you will you will see the rewards pretty quickly. You don't need to be an expert to play it. And uh, yeah, so hop into a custom, get down some of the timings, get down some of those harbor walls, and then uh, enjoy your free wins because this comp going towards B is very, very hard to stop.